Father, we give you praise tonight. Amen. We exhort you, we enthrone you. Amen. Oh, send me the Zega Negador, Zobregadi, Yalabagaya, Brenda, Jukali, Yalabregadoska. We bless you tonight. Man, Gredo, Super Hot Tire. Yes, that you have your way tonight. Malika Pussy Branda Gaya Man Crede Jevana Hatala Bagaya Meregedoso Sona Man Bosia Thank you for entrance Libanayata Libanayata Sutala Bagaya Libanayata Sukala Bagaya Oh Jebranda Sutali Yala Bagaya Bedosu Pata Lines are falling upon us in pleasant places. Come into heritage of the Lord. Come into heritage of the Lord. Lord, we make ourselves available to use us to advance your cause upon And we want to ask that you purge us. Ask that you please us. Make us a ready vessel for advancement of your kingdom upon earth. Give praise, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, tonight we are still on our journey in the temple of Solomon. Uh, the Temple of Solomon, and um, we have established that the essence of the temple is for the place of his presence, for the essence of his glory, for the carrying of the cabal, where the glory of God will rest. And I remember reading scripture last week when the Lord began to instruct on us uh, who will bring him to nations. Do you remember that? I mean, yes. Some who will bring me to nations? Yeah. Some see the same. Let emphasis on that. God is still looking for a man Amen. to bring him to nations. Amen. That has been a great burden in my heart. I've been praying and traveling that the Lord will make me a vessel that will take him to nations of the earth mm -hmm. that he might accomplish his work by himself. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord that will do his work by himself. Mm -hmm. And the people of Solomon established that. Jokina and uh, mm -hmm. I will build and I will finish. I will build and I will establish it. It is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but it is God that showeth mercy. Mm -hmm. so the house shall be built by mercy of God. Mm -hmm. Now we are looking at the instructions of God to Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, when they were joining, the Lord uh, was speaking to, uh, the Lord spoke to Moses concerning. We will build and they put his name there. Mm -hmm. Where he will build and they put his name there. Mm -hmm. So that means that another major reason for the temple is a place that will house the name of God. A place that will house his name. Mm -hmm. That's actually uh, God you know, set apart a city called Jerusalem uh, to be the place that his name will be. You see, amazingly, Satan doesn't want that. War has been in the whole world. God said, I just need Jerusalem for my namesake. But war has been going on in that city so that the of the Lord will not be established in Jerusalem. God has chosen Jerusalem. This is a place. In fact, in the days of 
Remember when the poor made wrong decision in the second King chapter? When Rehoboam made the wrong decision, God sent a prophet, uh, Ahijah. I do remember Ahijah, the uh, Shilonite. Hallelujah. He was a prophet. Uh, you know, Shiloh was actually a place where, uh, you know, men that love the Lord stayed. So this man loved Shiloh and lived in Shiloh. So he was known as the Shilonite. Praise God. So in those days, uh, as Jeroboam was running out, he met him on the way and tore his new woman into uh, and gave him pain and said, do that the thing that the Lord has said. You will live as your heart desire. Mm. But I have taken the kingdom from the hand of uh, Solomon, and I will give it to you. He said that I will reserve Jerusalem for my name's sake. So Jerusalem is for my name's sake. Then when the Lord beach uh, his um, tabernacle or his tent, he beaches his name there. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. You notice know this, um, yeah. this um, when I was trying to meditate on what you said um, last Tuesday, so you mentioned something about the fact that Jerusalem, that people shouldn't stay at Jerusalem, but they should go to Mount Zion. So from what you said, because I had never um, come to the understanding that there was a difference between Jerusalem and Mount Zion from the place of the Christian. So from what you said, it's like when you look at the journey of the Christian, Jerusalem is a place of where you are complacent from what you were saying. Unless I'm, I, because I, 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 I go back to it and try to um, get more understanding. Um, okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, you see, Jerusalem, like I said, that Zion is in Jerusalem. Now, what God is actually, now is Jerusalem is the city of God. Okay. But in that city of God, there is Zion, which is the ruling citadel of God, where the laws of God spring forth from. Now, in fact, let's put it this way. Now, let's say there is a move of God. God want to tabernacle in Nigeria, and the Lord will set apart Nigeria for me. That Nigeria belongs to me. And then what God want to do in Nigeria, he wants to start at Abuja. So even though that he's saying that I have set apart Nigeria for my purpose, but in Nigeria, his emphasis is in Abuja. I don't know if you get what I just said. Mm -hmm. So when you get set apart Nigeria, so when you get to Nigeria, where is the place? And the place is Abuja. Mm -hmm. So when you say, leave Jerusalem for me, now because the Lord has inheritance in Jerusalem. But the governing seat of God is in Zion. So God wants to secure Jerusalem. He wants to say now because he rules in Jerusalem. He rules. Though we are talking about Zion today, the eyes of God is upon everyone who is a child of God. Does power will come to Zion or not because he's, the name of the Lord is named upon him. 
Are we together? Yeah. Um, so it's a seal of God yeah. upon Jerusalem and upon yeah. the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Yeah. However, realized that in all the days of David, David never raised his hand against anyone in Jerusalem. Yeah. David never raised his hand against anyone in Israel. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. So, it's actually why, if we have a prophetic understanding of the covenant, we shouldn't hurt anyone who is a child of God. Yeah. We shouldn't. Because Jesus was careful saying that we should not hurt the yeah. least of this one. Yeah. If you touch the least of this one, you have touched me. Yeah. Even when Paul was persecuting the church, he met Saul and said, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? It was the church he was persecuted. But he was up there and saying that you are persecuting me. Are we together now? Yes. So, so we, we must leave with a prophetic understanding that what God was saying is that in the recent Jerusalem was actually a type and a shadow. But we are the real city of God. In other words, I want to raise a permanent place where my name will reside. Where my name will do well. So the sense of the building of the temple is to house the name of God. So when God built a temple, he put his name there. Yeah. But you see, the putting of the name of God in Shiloh, I, I hope you know that the name of God was in Shiloh. Yeah. But Shiloh was a transitory temple. It wasn't a permanent temple. Yeah. It wasn't permanent. Yeah. Praise God. Can we see? Because our God let us destroy Shiloh. Yeah. Oh my God, if we understand what God is doing, we will understand that the remnant work is a serious work. Because God will bypass this present Pentecost work to put his name in the bride. So it is the bride yeah. that will actually become the eternal temple of God. Yeah. I hope I'm not going too far. Yeah, so so I just really want to understand that statement, please, if I may. So when you say that they want to that they want to stay at Jerusalem, that they don't want to get to Zion. What does it actually mean? Like, are you talking about like the journey, or when you say that they want to stay at Jerusalem, that they don't want to get to Mount Zion? Are you saying why that they are not able to go to Zion? Can I get you very clear? Yeah, so I'm trying to understand the statements. When you said that, unless maybe I did not understand properly, when you said that they want to, that people want to stay at Jerusalem, that they don't need to go to work to go to to get to. Work. Okay, okay, I've gotten you right now. The people like the flamboyancy of Jerusalem. Oh yeah, that's what I was trying to understand. The people like the life in Jerusalem. Because in Jerusalem, you can have your flesh in Jerusalem. Okay. So will you liken Jerusalem to the outer court and then Zion to... Jerusalem is the inner court. Inner court. Jerusalem is the inner court. While Zion is the most holy place. Okay, now, 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 as we are talking, 
many of our Pentecostal fathers are coming to light and understanding that God is no longer where they are. But they are not ready to move because of the things they are holding. So they like to stay in Jerusalem. They, they won't be able to pay the price of joining into Zion. So for you to pay the price of joining to Zion, you have to lose all that you have. You have to be circumcised. You have to be naked. You have to let go. You have to, you don't need, you don't need to seek to impress anybody, only to impress God. I don't know if you are understanding why I made that statement. So people are at ease in Zion, but at, at, at Jerusalem, they are comfortable in Jerusalem. But when you get to the point that you know there is something beyond the pleasure of the earth, there is something beyond the earth life. There's a glory that first you can see the glory of this world. So you are ready to take a journey towards Zion. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, because in Zion there is no show life, no showmanship in Zion. Uh, no showmanship in Zion. Uh, Nobody uh, is above uh, his brethren uh, from the show in Zion. Uh, but in Jerusalem there are hierarchies. Uh, there are those that want to maintain supremacy over others. There are those that want to rule over others in Jerusalem. So Jerusalem is a type of Pentecost. So God does not want to resident there permanently. Are we together? Amen. So he does not want to resident there permanently. He was on a journey seeking for a resting place. So he was seeking for a resting place. So he wants to rest in his bride. So that's why he's looking for a permanent structure, a permanent building, a temple where he will live for all eternity and not move away from it. Can we see Jeremiah chapter 7? Yeah. What does are we? Yeah, what was ready? I'm trying to get where okay. okay uh, let's take is quite a little bit long reading. Let's take from verse 16. Okay. Therefore, pray not thou for these people. Yeah. Lift up cry, no prayer for them. Neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Seest thou that not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, and the fathers to kindle the fire, and the women need their dough. To make mm. it queen of heaven, mm. of offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Mm. Do they provoke me to anger? Saith the Lord. Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place. Upon man and upon beast and upon the trees of the field and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. 
and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the way that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined ye ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward, not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor inclined. Okay, okay. Uh, read verse um, 11 and 12. 11 and 12. Yeah, verse 11 and 12. Sorry, verse 10, 11, 12. Okay. Come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to all these abominations. Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go ye now unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first. And see what I did to the I did it I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. Mm. Praise God. Mm. Well, there is something I want us to see here. I want us to see the backsliding state of Israel. Now, because the people of Israel is actually the inhabitant of the city. And these people were not actually worshipping God inwardly, in sincerity and in truth. So these people specialize in, okay, uh, what God wants is the sacrifice and offering. Let's just give him, let's do our thing and give him sacrifice and offering. Mm -hmm. Go through the motion. Just like in those days when I remember when I was Growing up, two people were having issues, one said to the other, I will deal with you today, and after that, I will go to church and confess. After dealing with you, so she wants to have her way and then go to God to reconcile. Now, something the people, the people's heart. Okay, let me just go and give God sacrifice and all of those things. And the Lord began to tell them that when I brought your father out initially, I did not command them to do sacrifice, but to obey my voice. But to inwardly follow my ways and my instructions. But the so look at it now came in verse, hallelujah, in I. I, I, now come and stand before me in this house which is called by my name. Now, if this house is called by his name, he, do, he does not expect you to go and commit murder, adultery, all kinds of the malice and steal it onto the house. Because if that continues, he will leave the house. Amen. I'm communicating to us. Amen. Now, let, let's take it from verse 8. Behold, you draws in lying walls that cannot profit. You will steal, murder, and commit adultery, and wear falsely, and swear falsely, and uh, burn incense unto God. And walk after other God whom you know not, and then come and stand before in which is called by my name, and say we are delivered to do all this abomination. You see now the people will go have their way and do everything, and after a while they will return back to this house. So obviously the Lord will not. Do well in house eternal. So the reason for building the permanent temple is a permanent temple where the name of the Lord will stay forever. And that's actually the city that Abraham was looking for. It is a city that has 
foundation, whose maker and builder is God. So God referenced them in the next house, in this house, which is called by my name. You become a den of robbers in your eye. Behold, when I have seen it, say the Lord, but go you now unto my place which was in Shiloh. Go and check out Shiloh. Check out Shiloh, where I set my name at the first. And see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. Mm. So the reason why God forsook that tabernacle of Shiloh was because of the wickedness of his people. Mm -hmm. Was because the people forsook him. They endured in religious activities. Mm -hmm. He said, go and check what I did because I put my name there and my name cast there. So God has to move from Shiloh. Mm -hmm. That's why he moved to Zion, a permanent place where his name will he stay and he sit there to govern in righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the temple of Solomon teaching us that the Lord is building the temple by himself? The Lord is establishing us where his name will be forever. Take note that the name of the Lord is actually the nature of God. So God is uh, giving us the nature by the operation of his world. Mm -hmm. God is giving us a nature. He is, uh, which one will I use? To denature us. To denature us. To remove the formal nature. To build a permanent site. Mm -hmm. I just want us to meditate on what I am saying. Mm -hmm. God does not want to do well in you and after a while, he leaves and moves because God has been on a journey and that journey has a terminus, a bus stop. You remember the woman at the well that met Jesus and said, now we know that you are a prophet. We are in the right place of your presence because it is a place of his presence, it is a place of worship for more people say it is on the mountain, and you are saying it is in the temple. So where is the right place of worship? That's to tell you that the worship began from the mountain and then moved to the temple. Mm -hmm. Now the temple served as a witness, as a type, as a prototype of uh, a prototype of a permanent side because there's always a foundation for temple. Where you say that he that heareth my word. And doing that is a man that yeah. is digging the brain, the foundation of his life. Yeah. That's why in the book of Revelation, he said that that city has foundation. And yeah. the foundation of that city yeah. were 12 stones, 12 yeah. precious stones. And the name of the, yeah. uh, the name of the yeah. names of the apostles yeah. of the Lamb were written on it. And that is to tell you that this is a city that will be with the apostolic doctrine, apostolic teaching. It will be raised against anything that makes offense, against anything that makes unholy. So this is where the name of God wants to be eternally. God was talking to so, because, like I said, when God was speaking to Solomon, it was a double reference prophecy. When he said that, um, you know, you will reign on the throne forever. And then he also said that my name will be in this temple perpetually. So, actually, it wasn't talking of that temple, but the temple was a shadow. But it was speaking of the, the, the temple that they beloved of Christ. Who is the remnant church? The bride of Christ. Mm. Am I communicating? Mm. Are we together now? Mm. Not just for the body of Christ, but for the bride of Christ. Mm. Mm. I hope you know the, that the bride of Christ is different from the body of Christ. Mm. Yes. Body of Christ, that is a body of Christ, that is a bride of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, 
the bride comes out of the body. Just like Adam was to be the body. And from the body, Eve, who was the bride, came forth. So there is an Eve war that is called the second remnant, where the name of the Lord will be established. That's why in the book of Revelation, he said the name of the Lord was in that city. Mm -hmm. That the name of the Lord, in other words, God has natured that city. God has to nature the city in order to become one with the city so that he can ride on the city to the nation of the earth. Amen. Amen. God is not comfortable in riding on the Pentecost man. God is looking for a temple where God is. Now, permit me to say this. Permit me to use this word. God is sporting right now. God has been sporting and he is still sporting. You know, the psalmist described my feet that dwelleth. Between the cherubims, so God dwells between the cherubims, but actually, his original, you know, his architectural design wasn't to do it in the midst of the cherubim, but to do it in the midst of his people. So, because the people are not yet built eternally, built permanently, they can't come down until the people are built, until the permanent site is built, and the bride is the permanent site. So it's starting now between the children. Until the redemption of the purchased possession, so the body was purchased to become the tabernacle in which he will eternally do it, that Christ may be formed in you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we see we see that the the uh the plan was strong, gave to David. David took the architectural plan of the eternal dwelling of God. He took it and then handed it over to Solomon to build it. Mm -hmm. Now David was the only king who was alive to inaugurate his son on the throne. As long as you live, your son will not come to the throne as a king. The only time it happened was in the days of David, and it happened for a reason. You remember Isaiah chapter 6? Remember, in Zedekiah 6 says, or where the Bible says, In the days that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Mm. Do you remember the scripture? Mm. Praise God. Mm. Do you remember the scripture? Mm. Yes, this one in the year that King. Now, what I'm trying to say is that God does not want to move, mm. leave a canary in mm. the house that he will destroy. Mm. He said, remember what I did to Shiloh because they violated my laws and my ways. Just go to Shiloh and check. In other words, I will do that, do that same thing. And Shiloh is like a Pentecost. So there is an eternal and permanent house that Christ is building. Just like I said, that a, a king can sit. If you, if you read that Uzza, in the day that Uzza died, I saw the Lord. Uh, so many people have preached a lot out of that message. Uh, but you see, what that message was actually said because uh, when Uzziah, uh, Uzziah became uh, leprous, uh, I hope you know the story, uh, in Second uh, Chronicle chapter 26, he uh, became uh, leprous when he entered the most holy place to offer incense. He became uh, leprous. Uh, we together now. Mm -hmm. And he was moved out. Mm -hmm. When he was moved out mm -hmm. of the place, because 
He yeah. can't be a king as a leper. He was moved down. Now, because he was aligned, his son, Jordan, could not become a king because he was aligned. Are we together? Yes. Yeah. Any explanation? I should go on. Yes. Yeah. Okay, because he was alive. So at that point, the throne of Israel was vacant. Yeah. There was no sitting king on the throne for that few period of time. Yeah. Israel were trembling. Because there was no king, because things could not defense, it could not security, it could not administration, it could not provisions. And then when King Hosea died, Isaiah saw the Lord on the throne ruling over his people. He saw the Lord on the throne. In other words, in the absence of physical man on the throne. I am governing my people. I am ruling over my people. Mm. So what am I saying? David became the first to hand over, which is actually what we saw when God inaugurated the kingship of Jesus Christ. Mm. Are we together? Yeah. David has to be a type that inaugurated the kingdom of Solomon. Yeah. In the time of God, inaugurating the kingdom of Jesus Christ. The throne is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of the kingdom. For thou loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Yeah. So, if, so Solomon can now have the legitimacy to build, yeah. to build the eternal temple of God, just like Jesus has the eternal legacy in building the temple of God. If Jesus is building the temple, we'll see that when we get to Ezekiel Temple, when he, uh, he say, I will build my church and the gate of heaven will not prevail over it. I will build my church. The gate of heaven will not prevail over it. Because the church has not been finished building up to now. Yeah. Are we together? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So the part of the substance yeah. of the building material needed to build the church yeah. that the yeah. letter that the early rain came with has yeah. exhausted and the building is not completed. Yeah. We need to wait on the Holy Ghost for the uh for the latter resources for the completion of the building of the house of God. Uh, Are we establishing understanding? Uh, Praise God. Uh, now, what I just said now, basically, most of the fathers that operated, they operated with the resources uh, that they needed that the early rain supplied. Yeah. There were resources that the early rain supplied. Yeah. So the early rain yeah. did not carry the whole substances that would be needed to build the complete house. Yeah. Mm. So some of the resources for the completion of the building are, you know, installed in the latter rain. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's why we are, wait, we are awaiting, we are waiting for the latter rain. So all that Apostle Paul, all that Stephen, all that the early church operated with, they operated with the early rain. That was even Apostle Paul said that we that are alive, we receive him. For behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But you see, let us end the problem. Why? Because now Paul then realized he was born out of time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I was born out of time. In other words, Paul came to understanding there are components, there were resources. Yeah. The completion of the house uh, that the uh, early rain uh, did not carry. Uh, 
So if you're part of those receiving the lottery, blessed are you. Blessed are you if you're part of the latter rain. Look at James chapter 5 verse 7. Pastor Judy can read James chapter 5 verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the free. For behold, the, the husbandman waited for what? The precious fruit of the earth. Waiting for what? For the precious fruit of the earth. For the precious fruit. Why the precious fruit of the earth? If you just get the fruit of the earth, there's a precious fruit. Uh, God that will be the eternal tabernacle of God. Uh, God that will carry endless life, body, uh, mm -hmm. waiting for, waiting for the precious yeah. fruit of the earth. Uh, Go on, complete the scripture. And have long patience for it. He has long waited for it. So there's a breed of people, there is a breed of the same that the Lord had been waiting for all these years. As you part of that breed. He has long waited for. Uh -huh. Until he received the early and latter rain. You see, until he received the early and the latter rain. Uh, he, he received not because he uh, brought in the early rain because in time we come the operation of the early rain ceased. Uh, so right, uh, there is a return of the early and the latter rain together of every church right now. Uh, uh, and what is separating the church on the third day? What is separating the entire church is the descent of the latter rain upon the church. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what is separating the descent of the latter rain because the latter rain carries the pure breed. It carries the pure, uncontaminated, unalloyed, unheaven revelation of the Father for the building of the house. So, in other words, we are not going to have any human form. Human strain, uh, human idea, it is purely the law building. Because it's building on a permanent site. So the temple of Ezekiel is that permanent site, which the structure, which the pattern that was given to Solomon by David is a structure of a man. It's pure structure of a man. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. When I see that, oh my God, I was so amazed. So what yeah. Solomon was yeah. actually a yeah. What Solomon built was actually a man. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. That was what they called the manhood of Christ. Yeah. The man in the image and the stature and the fullness of Christ. Yeah. That's what that temple represents. Yeah. That temple represents a man in yeah. the image, a man that is established, a man that cannot move. You remember the, the word of the Philadelphia church, the love of the... Now, Philadelphia simply means the love of the brethren. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He said he no longer move. Huh? His feet, you will make him a pillar yeah. in the temple. Mm -hmm. He will make him a pillar. That word was gotten from the temple of Solomon. He will make him a pillar in the temple. Yeah. Make, make him a pillar means wow. he has finally arrived at a destination, at the place of the fullness of Christ, where he will no longer be moved through and through 
where a nature, he has become the house of the Lord. The Lord has natured him with his truth to become. Uh, he's not going to go out anymore. Mm. He's not going to come in anymore because when you're joining in the journey, using the tabernacle pattern, when you err, you go back at the altar court, washes yourself, confess your all of those things, and begin a journey again. So he is going and coming. His feet have not been made a pillar. Uh, mm. And what the Lord wants is that this tabernacle, this eternal temple that is building, his feet will be made a pillar. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. His feet will be made a pillar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. the, Lord spoke to, uh, the, 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 the Lord spoke to Moses and said that this house will be a house of prayer for all nations. Mm -hmm. Then you check in that temple that I said last week, in that temple are engravings. The engraved in that temple. I think uh, um, Second Chronicle chapter 3, help me with Second Chronicle chapter 3 verse 5. Yeah. Second Chronicle 3 5. And the greater house, the greater house, he sealed with fur with fur tree, and he over which he overlaid with fine gold, and set there on palms. Palm trees and chain. Palm trees. They said they palm trees and, and chains. Uh -huh. And he garnished the house with precious stones for And beauty. he garnished the house with precious stones. The he garnished the house now with palm tree. Now when you enter that temple, what you see is what uprightness. What you see the palm trees and representation. Of uprightness, uh, a, representation, a representation of uh, a fruitful tree. Uh, you see chains, uh, a man that understands uh, fellowship, uh, working with a saint. Behold, uh, how good and how pleasant for the brethren to do it together. They chain themselves together. Uh, mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Then every precious stones. Precious stone speaks of the characters of Christ. It speaks of the characters of Christ. The precious stone. Go on. And the gold was gold of carving. He overlaid also the house, the beams. The you see the gold. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. You know, in the tabernacle, the gold was made by the goldsmith. Mm -hmm. huh? That's a representation. There is a work that God will do in your life that is not the impute of the fivefold ministry. That is not what you study, but by the personal dealings of God in your life. By the personal dealings of God, you were not taught, nobody sat you down, it's not what you studied, but by the personal dealings of God, that God is like a, a gold smith that divine nature. Gather all that you have studied and made gold out of your life. Mm. Garnish with every precious stones. Mm -hmm. Every precious stones. Mm -hmm. But we find out in the days of Ezekiel also, the Lord said to Ezekiel, come and see what the elders are doing in the world. The elders have came, they replaced the images and began to carve images, carve 
creeping things in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then the judgment of God has to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The temple of God is supposed to be a temple of beauty, a temple that contains precious stones, a temple that contains palm tree, a temple that contains chairs. Here, you see in the inward of the wall of the temple, you see malice opposite to the chain. You see unforgiveness instead of the chain. You see creeping things instead of the angelic nature, instead of the nature of Christ crystallized in the wall of the temple. And the Lord became angry with the people and keep punching them. Remember what I did in Shiloh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember what I did in Shiloh. It is not about burnt offering. It's not about you come and Clap your hand in church, sweep the church, arrange the church, and all of those things. It is all about giving attention to my word, heeding to my instructions. Because I said to them, remember, when I brought your fathers at the initial time, I did not tell them anything about sacrifice and uh, offerings. All I told them, if you will obey my word, if you give heed to my instructions, that you can obey uh, for obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. It's better than sacrifice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the Lord teaching us here? What is the Lord teaching us that we should be inwardly decorated for beauty and glory yeah. in order to carry his name eternally? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In order we become the temple that carries his name eternally. So we are not carrying the name of the Lord with creeping images. Uh, we are not carrying the name of the Lord with abominable things. Uh, but it should be a temple that is pure. Uh, we have fellowship. Uh, we have incense. Uh, rise unto the Lord. Uh, we have incense. We have sweet odor. Fragrance of God rises unto God on continual basis. So that God can through you begin to travel the nation from the rise of the sun to the going down. My name shall be great and instant shall be born everywhere. For I am a great God that through you and I, who are the temple of God, who carries God, men will see Amen. the beauty of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Malachi 111, that's where it is. You can read that scripture. Yeah. In Malachi chapter 1, verse 11. From the rising of the sun, even unto the going down. From the rising of the sun, even to the going down. Yeah. My name shall be great among the Gentiles. Yes. And in every place, incense shall be offered unto my name. And Make note, in every place, incense shall be offered. Uh, and the pure of uh, we are We are to be incense everywhere we are. Uh, we are to be fragrance of God. Uh, I think in, uh, uh, is it in uh, Second Corinthians 2, 14, just finish that one, then you read 2 Corinthians 2 for thing. So my name shall be great among the heathen. Then my name shall be great among the heathen. Yeah. <laughs> Lord of hosts. God is concerned about the heathen. God is concerned about the heathen. Mm -hmm. I, I am writing a, a new book. I was writing a particular chapter today that was Stressing the point on, on the book is uh, yeah. the lost yeah. and how to do a right. Yeah. And I was writing on the uh, my house and called the house of prayers yeah. for all nations. Yeah. So our prayer, yeah. our book of prayer must be towards all nations. Yeah. What bringing all nations to uh, submit to the government of God and advance yeah. and his will upon the earth. Uh, bringing all mission under the government of God. Uh, That's why in the Temple of Solomon, there were provision for the Gentile. Uh, there were provision for the Gentile. So when we have built that house that has the name of the Lord, 
that reside in us eternally that's not going to be segregated anywhere. When Jesus became the, the house of God, what, what he did is to break the wall of petition. He broke it. Jews and Gentiles can be one in God. Amen. So right now, God is through us reconciling the earth. Through Amen. us becoming intercessory and reconciler. Amen. So God will reside in, in us signing the word unto himself. Amen. We must understand the essence of this tabernacle because if you're not built according to the pattern, God will lead them. So God will not be comfortable. God will not realize. He will leave us to be his spot. He kept asking Israel, where is the house that you built for me? Where is the house? Where is the house? Where is the house? God is in need of a house. God is in need of a house. Because God, in his wisdom, designed the earth that no operation on earth without a physical body and God subject himself to his laws. In fact, in Ephesians 1, he said he take counsel after his word. He exalted his name. He, he exalted his word above his name. Yeah. It is a final law of God that nobody can operate on earth without a physical body. That's why when God was coming to the earth, they have to prepare a body for him. Mm -hmm. They have to prepare a body have thou prepared for me. Sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest desire, but a body you prepare for it is written, Lord, in the volume of the book, it is written, I come to do thy will, O God. Mm -hmm. I come to do thy will. So that temple, that body is actually a temple that will do his will, that the will of God is such as of God will flow from the all nation. Mm -hmm. permanently, eternally. That is what God is looking for. God is not looking for those whose faithfulness is like the morning cloud. Your faithfulness gather, you swear, as the Lord leave, this and this. After a while, it will just go off. You return back. You become like a desico, despondent, you become lazy. After a while, so hey, hey, God, 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 let's go, let's go, God, God, God. After a while, you come down again. You become lukewarm at a time. At a time, you are strong. No, God wants a permanent house where his name is established, where he will govern the earth, where he will rule and establish his authority forever. Neighbor, mm -hmm. praise God. Mm -hmm. I think I I said you should read another scripture. Which scripture is that? Did I mention a scripture to read to be read? Second Corinthians two fourteen. Oh, Second Corinthians two fourteen. Yes. God bless you. Now thanks be unto God. Which always unto God, which always causes us, us to triumph in Christ, which always causes us to triumph, and, and make us manifest the savor of his knowledge by us, and make us to manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Hallelujah! Amen. The savor. Was say the fragrance every that's why one of the major things they do is to burn incense in that temple. So incense rises from that temple unto God. Incense rises very important about a temple that carries God, that refuses the fragrance of God. Mm -hmm. Because that which God is doing, Satan wants to do in the reverse. What is it that Satan wants to do in the reverse? 
to use men as a temple also to propagate his way. Take out one also to go to nations to men to see what is going on now. The cross is a government hiding through men, going to nation, negotiating some sex marriage. All of those things. It's actually Satan. They became a temple through which Satan will express himself, express his agenda. So we are saying that Satan also is riding through men as a temple, entering the nations of the earth, colonizing those nations. We have to rise up so that the will of God will prosper and flourish in our days. This is why we are here. This is why we are standing for God. That God build us an eternal temple. I love that. Uh, hallelujah. Now, I love that, that he will build and he will establish. And let's talk that he will build us, he will establish us. We come to play. Uh, it seems that we are we are running, we are crawling, we fall. We are like children who running to walk, to walk and fall. But the time we come, we are not only going to be a walking, but to be running. Mm. Am I communicating tonight? Mm -hmm. Praise mm -hmm. the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I am glad that God is building us a temple. Mm -hmm. So that sense of the fivefold ministry is to raise a permanent temple, not a temporary temple. All of those other structures, the Shiloh, uh, they were the Shiloh was a temporary. Even though it carries the pattern and all of those things. And God is saying, look at what I did to Shiloh. I will still do that again. And that is a time of what God is now doing now with Pentecost. God has left the Pentecost order. God has left it. That's why they do no longer have anything. All the revelation of the later rain, sorry, the early rain, have been exhausted. What happened? They are just going around circle. They are just going around circle. They are just going around circle. Going around circle of Kenesh Bania. Going around circle. And after a while, they say, let us make captains for ourselves. Let them take us back to Egypt. And that's actually what is happening. We have servant of God right now taking men back to Egypt. Rooting their feet again on the foundation of the material. Jesus said, whoa. Well, Unto the scribe and the Pharisee, you encompass the city, you encompass the sea to make one disciple. And when that disciple is made, he becomes worse than the devil. He becomes worse than the devil. Why won't he become worse than the devil? Because in our churches today, when they come, we tell them if you stay in this church more than three months, if you have not prospered materially, live here. So the heart of the people is charged with, 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 with materialism, is charged with covetousness. Mm -hmm. instead, of, instead of seeking how to become the eternal temple of God, uh, they just become temporary temple. Uh, and I am scared that some of us won't be like Shiloh. But we are going to be the Zion wherein God love. Yeah. We're going to be the eternal temple wherein God love that God will use to advance his eternal counsel, advance his purpose upon the earth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why in the uh, in the temple of Solomon we have the uh, mountain sea. Multi C, that multi C is also called the sea glass. Before you enter, this is where you wash out everything that represents flesh and carnality. Because you are joining to have a counter with a God that you are going to carry. Now, it's important for us to understand some of this thing because they will help us to understand the scripture more. Because some of this is a part of the uh, scripture that was given by inspiration of God. That, that, that are possible for doctrine. 
a part of the thing that Paul said there for our learning. Because if you don't understand this, so you get to the book of Revelation, when you see sea glass, you don't know what the sea glass is. The sea glass is the, uh, the naughty sea in the temple of Solomon. Is a melting sea in the temple of Solomon, the sea glass. Yeah. Where the commas, the yeah. commas are those coming to God. Yeah. The commas are those, the commas, the yeah. melting sea. Yeah. Wash themselves. Yeah. The priests yeah. wash themselves. Yeah. Cleanse themselves. Yeah. Wherefore they are aside all filthiness yeah. and superficial nothingness yeah. and receive meekness. The engrafted word of God, which is which is able to save our soul. So the engrafted word of God is actually able to save our soul. Amen. Is able to save our soul. What is the essence of the saving the soul that God will invade and have eternal? Residence in us. From there, advance his purpose upon the mission of the world. It is my prayer that all of us shall become that vessel that God will write through to the nations of the earth. It is my prayer that you be that vessel that will serve the nations of the earth pure wine, not uncontaminated wine. So, you see why God cannot be proud of that. Of those temples because those temples still have mistress. So God will not like to ride through them. Because if God ride through them, they will contaminate nations of the earth. Mm. Am I communicating? <laughs> Just as we are seeing confusion going on everywhere, people serving all kinds of wine. But do not forget that at the end of the wedding, Yeshua served. Yes. Supernatural wine. Amen. May Yahweh keep us. May Yahweh strengthen us. Amen. Cause His face to shine upon us Amen. and elaborate more Amen. of this thing for our soul. Amen. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Sir. God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah. Wonderful night. I'm grateful. Yeah, okay. Father, we bless you tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah. We give you praise. Man gada bahatena. Men ya kabuse brana hata la madesh kahana. Ale dore gado so brana. Can we just pray in the spirit for a while? Madanga doskia. Le bere gado shahana man gades gadiya. Ale bere gado shahana branga dana magadoskia. Bring up Baba Baba Sutala Madesh Kahana. She lalega lega lega no so bring a dia la magaya. Le pranosa sona Brenda Gana la magaya. Esha bring a dia la magana Brenda sona. He kalia bredosa sona bring a dia la magaya. Oh, we bless you, Father. Man kredesa bana gaya. Then you bring a dosa sona Brenda Hana. Ne kredesa gaya bredes kahana bredes kalia. Raga baba baba sukalia, raga dega 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 sukalia la baraka doska hana. Enja Brenda Ghana, jebe raga dia la baraka doska. Repone hata, repone hata se raga dia. We bless you, we honor you, Father. Father we Jesus. Father we Jesus. Father we Jesus. Even as you have been in our hearts, eternal dwelling place, wherein you put your name perpetually. We honor you tonight. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.